I first started planning my home theater, I wanted it to be a fun space with a really big screen. I wanted to have movie posters, a pool table, popcorn machine, a bar, LED lighting, and all the kinds of toys any normal grown-ass adult man would have surrounding him in his man cave. But I realized it wasn't realistic for movie watching. It was a private Dave and Busters for the 15-year-old me. Not the sophisticated, worldly, finely aged and seasoned me you have before you today. What did I want to do here? Build a clumsy man cave filled with stuff that's likely to rattle and vibrate? Or take movie watching more seriously and go full bad cave where the picture quality was center stage to all else? In this video, I'm going to show you the trials and tribulations of discovering that only black velvet can do what no black paint can do. I won't get into the logistics of what goes into designing a proper home theater, but there is one rule you can't break when using a projector. You need it to be dark. Reflections and uncontrolled light are the enemy. Determined not to relive my past experiences, I decided to paint the room with the blackest, flattest paint I could buy locally. It was recommended online that a tint called Mouse Ears added to PPG Diamond Super Flat paint would get the job done. I could get it down the street at my local Home Depot, so that seemed to be my only option. I also bought several cans of Kills 2 gray primer with the maximum amount of black tint added so it would be as dark as possible. There was no black primer that I could find anywhere, so this had to do. To keep the room consistent, I need everything to be black, like the carpet, wall switches, outlets, and baffles for the recessed ceiling lights. There will not be a single non-black thing in this home theater. Even after the entire project was completed, I still had to cover the light baffles with adhesive velvet flocking material and one switch plate with velvet. They reflected too much light and now they are invisible. To further enhance the room, I bought some ATS Acoustics 2-inch sound panels. They are filled with mineral wool and wrapped with Guilford of Maine's blackest fabric called Pitch. When I got these panels home and unboxed, they looked really black and I was thrilled. Things are coming together well. So I go through the process of painting all the walls and the doors with the primer. I did up to three coats in certain areas. Days pass and I start painting with the black. Wow, this paint looks extremely black when wet. Again, all walls and doors and whatever else, yada yada. Okay, the room and trim are done, but it's not wowing me. It actually just looks dark gray and not black. I'm not feeling this at all. I can clearly see reflections and light coming off the walls. This black paint is super reflective and I'm kind of pissed. Not only does it not dry anywhere near the black I was expecting, you can't touch it or even slightly bump it without leaving marks. Fortunately, I discovered that using painter's tape can touch up any areas that need attention without the need to repaint. Meanwhile, I had already purchased a bolt of triple black velvet for the fiber optic star ceiling next up on my schedule. Please check out that build video on my channel if you missed it. Since I have the velvet already, I cracked it open and cut a strip of it as a sample. Up against my blackest of black paint job, the velvet is night and day different. It's actually hilarious how bad all the black paint with the extra black tinting turned out compared to a piece of cloth. With the fiber optic star ceiling active, there's an excessive amount of reflecting light around its perimeter. I built a test strip of plywood with velvet stretched over it and Gorilla Tape all down the back to secure it. As you can see from the completed star ceiling, the black paint just reflects all the light from the optics. But when the test strip was put into place, the reflections were null and void. This is the way. Here are a couple more shots of the strips going up with the work lights on. I chose to go with plywood underlayment as panels to wrap the velvet around for the entire room. The same plywood used for the fiber optic star ceiling. I measured and sectioned off parts of the ceiling to keep the panels manageable. It took some careful work to get the measurements and cutting just right. The panel sections had to be precise for the Atmos speaker and ceiling light cutouts. To prevent sags, the velvet on all the ceiling panels was adhered on with industrial double-sided adhesive. As the panels are wrapped and secured, they are attached to the ceiling. I use a stud finder and mark off the studs with painter's tape. Using a 2-inch finishing nailer, I run some nails through the panels at an angle to meet the stud, and I also use a few black screws for additional safety. These panels are not coming down. With the ceiling completed, it's time to get the carpet installed and then move on to the walls. Getting the wall panels measured involved careful alignment of the speaker jack and receptacle cutouts. 
Since I had not originally planned to repanel the room, all the wall gangs were flushed to the drywall and had to be extended out to meet these new panels. As I'm getting started, I discover the acoustic panels mentioned earlier now look gray. They are the same shade of gray as the paint. As disappointing as that is, I can't do anything about it, I am stuck with them. It just shows how crazy black velvet actually is. Installing the remaining panels around the room is fairly easy, and I don't place any behind the viewing area at all. To finish off the theater space, I ordered some curtain rods off Amazon and my amazing wife sewed up some black velvet curtains to cover the media room and closet doors. With these curtains shut, there is a perfect black void along the sides of the screen. In addition to the curtains, we install a hemmed strip attached with Velcro across the bottom of the screen to hide the tower speakers and subwoofers. With the blackening of the home theater complete, every movie looks its best without any distractions. I hope you found what I did in my theater inspirational for your own projects.